Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today I'm going to be swatching and reviewing the Koi watercolors, specifically the dried pan palette that is their pocket field sketch box. This one comes with 24 colors in this little plastic container that can actually be set up so that you could put your composition in the top part. You've got your colors and then you can actually put your little pan and mixing wells over to the side. It also comes with a nice little water brush pen that you can use for mixing on the go. When I actually swatch these out, I will be using my own brush for this and not that little water pen because they're not my favorite to use unless I am actually sketching outside. So this is a great inclusion in this package for outside sketching, but not something that I like to use when I'm in my studio and have access to lots of water and my nicer brushes. I bought these from Blick for about $25, so about a dollar per watercolor. Color, and then you also get the packaging, which is pretty nice, and that little pen. My first impressions are pretty positive. I like the general color range. Everything looks like it's in good shape, so I'm going to wet all of these, and let's get to swatching. As a quick reminder, in case you haven't seen any of my other swatching videos or testing videos, the way that I do my swatching is in a four compartment test. The first is total saturation. The second is going to be, I'm going to thin it out so I can see how that gradient is. The third one, I do a total saturation, then I try to lift color out, and I also drop some color in so I can see what those back runs look like. And in the final compartment, I do a wet on wet test. So I pre-wet the paper and then I drop in some super saturated pigment there just to kind of see what it looks like and flows around. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. On the white swatches, I do pre-color this with some waterproof ink so that I can see how much it actually covers up. And the very first one, I'm not super duper impressed with the white watercolor, although I don't use white watercolor that often, so that doesn't matter that much to me but it's not super opaque and doesn't cover quite as much as I would like if I were to use one. And I will say that I was a little worried after starting that first one because my previous experience with Koi was with their tube sets and I really did not like those, mainly for the quality issues because they had a lot of separation and I ended up having to pour binder out of about half of the tubes and so I ended up rating those pretty low, just at like a three or almost four out of 10. And they only got points because some of the blues were incredible. And while I was kind of ready to just write off Koi watercolors altogether because of those quality issues, I saw a lot of different comments, both here and on my TikTok, that a lot of people use Koi and really like them, but that they were using the dried ones. So I decided to give them a go just to kind of give them another fair shake. And I'm glad I did because after that white, which I wasn't super duper happy with, all of these other colors are super pigmented and they're nice and smooth and they have beautiful background effects and wet on wet effects. I really enjoyed the range of yellows that they included. There's also a yellow ochre later in this pack and that's one of my favorite yellows. Either way, they had really nice saturation levels and it was easy to kind of apply these in a nice smooth fashion. So I was quite happy with what I was seeing as I was going through these. Some of these have really beautiful effects like this vermilion. When you pop this into the wet on wet part, oh my goodness, it just spreads so beautifully. I love those bursts of color. This set does include a cadmium red, which isn't my favorite to use just because of general cadmium concerns, but it, this one is a really pretty color and it does just apply beautifully. So if you wanted that pop of cadmium red, this is a good selection for these. The one red that I wasn't super duper crazy about is the Crimson Lake. And I have found a decent amount of variation in Crimson Lake across brands, whether it's darker or deeper or more saturated. And I personally like the ones that are a little deeper than the one that's here. This one is kind of like they just mix that cadmium red and the quinacridone magenta together or quinacridone rose. Speaking of the quinacridone rose, this one is a really nice, pretty color. I personally like the quinacridone magenta better that leans a little more to the pink side than this one. This one still has quite a bit of red hues for my personal taste, but as a color itself, it is a beautiful one and it applies beautifully. 
The purple violet color is a very, very beautiful purple. I would think of this almost more as a red violet, almost, because it leans a little bit more towards that red side, but it is a stunning color. Now, I typically like more of a traditional violet in a palette if it's just the only purple, because that's the hardest color to actually mix up. I could probably mix up a purple violet like that pretty easy with some of the other colors that are in here, but getting a super true purple is pretty hard at least in my experience, uh, compared to some of the other purple type colors. So I would have preferred this to be a deeper purple color. And then finally, we get to move on to the blues, which were the star of the show. I mean, I wanted to give the previous tube set of Koi's like zero stars, but some of the blues were so fantastic that I just couldn't because they were unique and beautiful and just wow. So I'm really glad to see that in the pan sets, they are also still really beautiful. As a matter of fact, typically ultramarine is my least favorite blue color in watercolor. It just doesn't really do it for me. I don't know why, but this Koi set could change my mind about it because the ultramarine here is just stunning. It has total saturation and it lifts beautifully. It's also kind of beautifully granulating. I don't know, I just really, really like it. Although I do have to say, I think my absolute favorite of these is this Prussian blue. It's almost kind of like a navy blue and it is just stunning. I absolutely love this color. The permanent green is a really pretty and nice and vibrant color, although it is kind of a covering color. So it has a lot of opacity to it. And personally, I would prefer to see something like a yellow green in here, something a little more transparent, but that's just my personal preference on if I have a super bright green in a palette. This one is pretty on its own. It's just a little bit different than what I'm used to as far as the bright greens. The Viridian Hue is really pretty. Um, I would like to see a little more blue in it, but it is a really pretty, I would almost label that one more as like a forest green. Um, there are, there are a few blue undertones to it, but not as many as when I'm thinking of a Viridian Hue, I'm thinking of something that has a lot more blue in it. That being said, I don't use a ton of the greens because I, most of the things I'm painting don't have way too many greens, and if I need one, I usually mix it up. So my green opinions are kind of few and far between. The rest of the greens were pretty nice. The yellow ochre was absolutely stunning in this set. And then there was a bit of a surprise with this light red color. It's kind of what I would think of like a burnt sienna, but it is totally covering. I mean, there is almost total opacity, almost like, almost gouache-like coverage with this color, which depending on the way you work, it might be super handy to have something totally opaque to cover things up. I typically prefer watercolors that are a little bit more transparent, but there are some really cool effects you can get with combining transparent and opaque watercolors. So that's going to be totally up to you on whether you like this amount of coverage. I do feel like the Burnt Umber, uh, I had a hard time getting much saturation with this color. This was probably with the white, one of the more disappointing colors when considering kind of the quality of the saturation level, because the rest of these kind of knocked it out of the park, even if I feel like they're maybe misnamed a little bit or their hues are just a little bit off from what I was personally expecting. I would just say that those two, the Burnt Umber and the White are the ones that kind of missed the mark as far as saturation levels for me. But other than that, Wow, 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 these did change my mind about Koi watercolors. I can see why a lot of people use these. And if you're thinking about getting some Koi watercolors, don't buy the tubes, but their dried pans do seem to be worth it. So let's actually talk about the rating in general. I'm gonna give these nine out of 10 Moogies for their price and value. I think that's a pretty fair price. The quality, I'm gonna give them a nine as well. Accessibility, these are available from a ton of different places. Amazon, most art stores are gonna have these. Blick, they're pretty easy to get. The uniqueness or wow factor, I'm gonna give them about seven. They're not super duper unique, but some of those blues are, so they definitely get some points for that. 
and the usability this is nice and portable and they are super smooth and easy to apply so they're also going to get nine points for that giving them a total score of 8.6 out of 10 moogies in my ratings, I don't just kind of willy-nilly give out 10s for when I like things because I'm trying to be fairly discerning so we can get a real true ranking of things. I know that I'm going to like quite a few things because it's an art supply in general, but something really needs to stun me to get a 10 out of 10 on these. In general, I would love to hear if you have tried these and if you liked them. If you've tried the tubes, please commiserate with me in the comments. And then also just let me know your general thoughts about Koi. If you have any suggestions for other palettes that I should test, I'd be happy to add them to the list. I've got some more coming up. If you like this review or this swatching, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I do post a bunch of swatching and testing videos here, as well as some watercolor tutorials and a few other things thrown in along the way. And I hope that you have a magically creative day.